decided to uh, add a few gussets in here. extension plate cut there so I guess we're gonna have to lose this kickstand we don't need that anymore then we kind of don't want to try so have to cut that off there's a lower mouth that needs to be cut off and it's got to be ground down I do not know what I think this was for the old chain guard we're not gonna need that anymore that's gonna get cut off that's getting cut off that's getting cut off that's probably getting cut off. So, we got a lot of hacking to do. Alright, we're back in the garage, working on the Reaper. We still have to cut everything off, we haven't done that yet. But, before we do that, in order to turn this into a trike, see our bearing there? It's already got a one inch axle. So, we need our axle to come all the way through. So, we're going to have to take this apart, and uh, we'll end up Figuring out where it goes, drilling a hole and probably using the rotary file and augering it out a little bit. And we'll get our axle installed soon. Alright, so we just got some 916 bolts on this thing, obviously. Alright, so these look like some sort of stripped out eighth inch probably. Now that we've established where we want our hole to go, we're going to find the center of that using the best tool known to man, our eyeball. Alright. I'm going to grab a drill. 
All right, so we've eyeballed our center. And when we open it up, we're gonna make it a little bigger than the one inch axle. Not by much, but a little bit. I'm gonna start out using step bits, see how close I can get it. Alright, it's time to cut some stuff off. Let's get to it, shall we? <sighs> so it won't bring you any luck. All right, on this side, I think I'm gonna do something a little different. Drill my pilot hole first. Try on this side something different. I'm gonna try this cheap high speed steel. It's already got some teeth broken off. Chinese bit from Amazon. Super cheap, but let's see what it does. Alright, we got our pilot hole. Pilot hole. So I guess uh, that cheap stuff isn't so bad. Uh, I'm sure it'll only do about five, 10 holes at the most, you know, on slow speed with a lot of oil, if you're careful, but it does the job. Now I just gotta hog it out a little bit with this 80 billion RPM. Really fun. Hey guys, how's it going? It is storming out here in SoCal. We need the rain, so it's good. Uh, we're getting back on the Reaper here, so I got the chain on there. I'm gonna show you guys how to get this motor lined up and your chains and sprockets real quick here. So, if you're using a brand new chain, now don't do this with a used chain because this will never work. So, kind of eyeballed it first, and then now what we're gonna do is we got everything decently snug we got the motor clamped in place so we can kind of move it now we're just going to rotate this chain now i know it's going to be really hard to see but i'll try and zoom in if you see the chain how it can move side to side on the sprocket there so what we're looking for in alignment is to have that sprocket centered with a little gap on either side of the chain so as we're rotating it through we got it nice and smooth. So if I cock the motor to the side a little bit, what it's gonna do is the chain's riding up against that inside right there. Now that's, we don't want that. It's gonna wear everything out. It's gonna skip chains and stuff. So keep that motor where we want it. Keep rotating it. And just keep moving the motor until you see that thing. Just nice and centered. Should be nice and quiet. So we're centered there. Okay, now we come back to here. Now we're off to one side as you can see. So. Getting somewhere. Ah, there we go. 
now we're getting it centered up. This takes some time. Interruptions is always cool. So, all right. So we got that centered in the teeth there nicely. So that's good. Now let's go back up, check the front. The front usually doesn't get far off when you're just in the back. Usually once you the front right, it stays pretty close. It's pretty good. So, we can mark our holes now. Now that everything's aligned correctly, we can mark our holes, drill them, then slot them back and forth to give ourselves some adjustment. And uh, we'll get through that right now. Dorito, next time you get a cold, uh, just go over here because uh, this thing really gets rid of boogers really well. <laughs> Let's get back to work on this thing. Yeah, cut those slots, um, get the motor mounted, and uh, see how far we can get this thing mocked up. So let's get to it, shall we? So when you're doing metal finish work, uh, you just want to make sure when you're using your sanding equipment that you hold it as flat as you can to the surface. I know it's really hard with the rotary style tool you know, and sanders. The DA is obviously a lot easier, but it would take you a year to try to do the whole thing with the DA. So do as much as you can with your angle grinder sander. Don't dig into the metal. That's the whole key to this metal finish, is not digging in where you have to add more weld and do it again. So, be very careful, take your time, and then run it over with the DA and smooth it. Hey guys, it's early Saturday morning here, and I realized I didn't film an outro. So, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. I hope it was a little educational, and um, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, I'll set up some links here for other videos. Come Thank back y'all for coming. Keep coming back and uh, I'll keep bringing more videos.